Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Transform Your Confidence Show, a place where you know we don't just provide the what, but we also back it up with the how. This week's leadership and advocacy themed episode is entitled How to Lead Self, Others and Organizations Through Holistic Leadership so everyone wins. A tall order, but one my guest today has mastered, and we get the privilege of learning from him. His name is Rainer Lohm, who is an executive coach and the founder of Boomerang Coach, a firm that specializes in career development, innovation, and transformational change. Welcome to the show, Rainer. I'm so happy to have you on to pick your brain and vast experience. What a treat for everyone watching, listening, and reading this. It's a pleasure to be with you, Raj. Wonderful. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. So let me just fill everyone in a little bit about your journey, Reiner. Just a small snippet, because there is a lot to talk about. Reiner has a 30-year career span and has predominantly been in the technology space with 20 of his years at Hewlett Packard, where he helped grow HB Software into a multi-billion dollar organization. While at HB, Reiner discovered his passion and talent in leadership development, where he trained leaders in how to scale from leading oneself to leading others to then leading an entire organization, the perfect person for this discussion. He has also written a book that released in spring this year called Aspire, Seven Essential Emotions for Leading Positive Change No Matter Where You Are. Lots to talk about, so let's dive right in. Reiner, clearly you made a fundamental decision to lead a mission-driven life after your tenureship at HB. Before we get into talking about your firm and the book, I want to ask you, why, you know, what is it that you believe in cultivating leadership skills is a game changer in building successful business ecosystems today. Why leadership cultivation? Tell us that. Wow, that's a wonderful question. I, <laughs> that's at the heart of, of my passion. Um, there, there's many dimensions to it, but I, I would say um, I would say one is really more uh, focused on the self-actualization, and the other is one: the, the, the why are we here? What's the the difference we want to make? Why are we here on Earth, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes a little bit into I would say uh, thinking beyond ourselves. Uh, so in the early part of my career, I um, really was very much focused on being the best I can be in terms of self-actualization, the things I was learning, I was studying, uh, the careers I had, and and so on. And uh, it was, uh, I'd say, exceeded my own expectations in, in that I could never have dreamed of, of, of the things I, um, I was able to accomplish or to build, help build. But in this process, I also, uh, maybe it had to do with age, maybe it had to do with seeing and looking at the world and myself differently, mm -hmm. think there, is, there must be something else why I'm here. Success alone that is measured in business and revenue and you know how how much you can grow and so on uh, was not enough anymore for me and also uh, discovering the many challenges we have in the world which we we have huge challenges we have climate change going on we have mm -hmm. you know a social um, economic um, racial divide mm -hmm. uh, we have wars going on pandemics and so on and uh, I realized that uh, I, it was what I had learned that I have a responsibility to make a difference. I grew up in, in Germany, in a divided country. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up with the heritage of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. uh, I inherited that as I was born after the war. And uh, rather than getting stuck in guilt, I transferred it in, transformed it into responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I would say I, I really uh, came to a was almost a spiritual realization. I wanted to make a difference and a greater difference. And I saw it as a journey that is, as long as I live and I'm healthy, I, I want to continue on. And so I turned it into a mission to mobilize leaders to help create a more sustainable and positive future uh, for all. 
You know, Reina, everything that you just said there really spoke to me on so many levels. And, I, and it gives everybody that's, you know, here with us today, just some context around, around why this is such an important mission for you. So let me let me kind of tap a little bit um, into some of the things that are speaking to me and coming up for me. We live in a world today, and you've already kind of, you know, alluded to this, where the work environment has shifted because of all the things that are going on from a workplace centric culture, um, you know, the type that we know was created by the industrial revolution to focus on the whole rather than the individual, to now being a workforce centric culture, where recognizing individual identity factors in things like your age, gender, economic and social background, sexual orientation, among others, is paramount today to ensure that the workplace is being inclusive. I want to ask you this as a leadership coach, how has this changed how leaders need to show up today versus when the whole kind of industrial revolution created the, the, the stratified infrastructure that we're all kind of breaking out of right now? Well, this is a this is a very good question, no? Uh, and and there's uh, again two 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 levels. One is the behaviors of a leader. How does he? What do others see of the leader? And the other is what is the inner condition of the leader? The inner work the leader has to do. And and uh, do I as a leader? I have been a leader for many years, and now mm -hmm. I'm coaching and I'm developing leaders. Uh, has the leader? Uh, why is the leader even leading? Right. That needs to be that needs to be clear to the leader and needs to be also expressed. People want to know why why is he or she leading me? Why should I follow that person? And uh, you you mentioned diversity, and I I'm glad that you added so many different dimensions of diversity because at some point in time diversity was very binary. Yes, right. It kind of was focused on color or ethnicity and so on. But it's we we learned there's much more diversity and there's probably more to learn about diversity. Mm -hmm. Right. There's kind of a lot we're of just we've dimensions. only just opened that door, haven't we, Reiner? I think so. I yeah. I believe so. I think every and I'm uh, I I have been always very interested in the inner inner life of people. I've been like a good listener and and empathetic listener, so I had always a little bit a sense of there's more, and I have been very curious about it. So some people like to go in space and they want to go to Mars, and yes, that is interesting, and exciting, and I would watch it, you know, the moon landing and all those things, but it didn't <laughs> excite me as much as like the inner universe, the inner discovery, there has been songs mm -hmm. written about it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I find that so fascinating. Uh, and and in, in my leadership, I have to say, it's, I have studied a lot of different disciplines. I have, I have an electrical and engineering degree. A I'm a computer scientist. I, I'm, I'm a, a, you know, a, a businessman, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and I have studied it. You know, I have an MBA and all these things. But nothing has been as powerful as understanding why people behave the way they behave, what keeps them from behaving the way they like to behave or, or the leaders want them to behave to, to achieve something greater, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. what shifts do need to occur on the inner side? So it's a lot of the inner work. I was always fascinated by it and I, I, that journey has not ended. I Every day I think, wow, there's so much more to discover. <laughs> Absolutely. And let's let's maybe tap into some of what you do at Boomerang Coach. Um, how does your company lean into these nuances? Some of what you talked about, some of the things that I kind of, you know, prefaced the question with that leaders need to cater to in its curriculum or your coaching parameters. Like give everyone a sense of what Boomerang Coach actually is and who yeah. it's for. Yeah, it's good. It's, these are good questions. I uh, so it's an executive coaching firm. So so the, I, I name it only this way. It's so much more, but because that everybody understands it, and then there's an established term and industry for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, there's three really domains why people come to me. Like if I take it at a higher level, one okay. is finding purpose and living the purpose. Mm -hmm. Right. So initially, my work. When I started, when I left the corporate world and I, I, I transitioned into coaching, a lot of that work was focused. My first book, actually, uh, that I published many years ago was focused on that, for pe helping people find that purpose, live their purpose, and, and live their passion with joy and so on and make a difference in the world. But the other thing that... that 
<laughs> the other thing that came up then is thinking, oh, now you helped me to be on the right path. I'm more aligned, but I'm still, I'm still struggling to be successful, which comes to the area that you have chosen. You want to make a difference. How can I create and lead the change successfully? Mm -hmm. and, and so the second part that people come to me is really how can I lead positive change? How can I lead aspirational change? Right. Like, you know, including even having a, a, a vision, a, an aspirational vision. And then how do I, what do I do to make it happen? Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the second, the second area, but this, the third uh, uh, typical area, and we all experienced this during the pandemic and so other crisis throughout, you know, the last decade or more mm -hmm. is uh, really be resilient. So people, mm -hmm. Sometimes let's say we have a coaching agreement and they have a specific uh, a purpose for that, a goal, and, and then we break it down in goals and metrics and really what they want to achieve. But one day they come and say, we cannot work on it today. I have a challenge. I lost my job or I lost my team or I have to reorganize or I lost my funding or whatever, you know, a pandemic started and I need to, I'm not sure if I can keep the business open. Mm -hmm. I think so there's setbacks in life, there's adversity. So people, the third area beside finding and living my purpose, how to lead change in that area that I care about and that in a greater sense at a higher level. And how do I lead successfully? And then the third area is how, how, can I be resilient? What do I have to learn to be resilient, but not just me, but also the people that I'm leading, the right. whole org team, organization, even including my own family or, or circle of friends or community? Absolutely. So much. Can I ask you this? Um, do people get to work with you one on one? Do you offer courses, mastermize? Like how do people work with you? I guess is yeah. my, my big question. Yeah, the 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 the. the one is a one on one with executive coaching. It's very individualized and customized. And so I'm the friend that listens and 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 helps to create shifts for the person to see new possibilities okay. and 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 help them pursue. So co executive coaching one on one, okay. the uh, that could be in person or or virtually. Uh, very often now nowadays virtually uh, yes. they work with me, but typically over maybe six twelve months period. Many of them, I have many long-term clients that have worked with me for many years mm -hmm. and they have climbed whatever ladder they were uh, like to higher crowns um, and, and, and developing and having a greater impact in the world. And then the, the second area is um, uh, I speak uh, quite a bit, okay. uh, but I also facilitate uh, more. Um, so many of the leaders I work with, but it could also be somebody I've not worked with, ask me, can you do more transformational work, help to develop my team, uh, take them to a different level. Uh, sometimes it's innovation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's about some kind of transformational change. Uh, right now in that time, whatever industry somebody works in, education, healthcare, or whatever, uh, ask then, uh, can you help my whole team to take them to a new level to deal with this situation? Uh, the the other the other thing I, I do quite a bit and that's a parallel stream always I write um, mm -hmm. and publish and and that is mainly to help more people to scale mm -hmm. better to reach more people. Absolutely, it's the accessibility component, right? Uh, I get that. Yes. I get that absolutely. Because not everyone can work with you, but everyone can access you know where you write. This is why your book, I, I'm assuming, was kind of put out there. But before we get into the book, I just want to, for those people just joining us, I want you to encapsulate what's the big picture mission for Boomerang Coach? Yeah, the, the big the big mission. That is, has been stable, uh, surprisingly, for so many years. That's what, um, that you know, a mission is good and you get up every morning and I'm uh, fired up. And, and even if things are hard, uh, uh, um, is really uh, mobilizing leaders, mm -hmm. people to to lead change in the area they care about, and and since uh, the world is a system, and and no matter on which part of society I improve, it has an impact on other parts of society. Uh, I've learned that in studying, uh, you know, system design and other things. But I, uh, if somebody works on climate change, or somebody works on social justice, or somebody works on in their family context or in their in a startup or in a mid-size or a large company or in a community. I work a lot with indigenous leaders and indigenous communities around the country. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and no matter where, it improves overall society. And so that is my mission, mobilize people and help them succeed on that, the change they want to create, that aspirational change they, they aspire to create. You know, it's really interesting because you have a diverse portfolio of the types of leaders that you work with. I want to ask you, you know, are there nuances in your technique, perhaps, or in maybe the types of leadership skills that you coach these different diverse leaders in um, that, you know, would be a good idea for us to talk about here? Because, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different types of people that come in and listen, watch and read um, this show. And I, I just want to be able to reach as many of them as possible in terms of really showcasing that your coaching is very diverse in terms of yeah. the types of leaders that you work with. So talk to me a little bit about that. Cause you know, oftentimes, and, and I guess, I guess what it, where this is coming from um, is that when you go to, you know, the internet, you go to social media, you'll have a coach and they'll say, I only do this or a coach that says, mm -hmm. I only work with this person. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then you have people like yourself and like me who have, decades of experience in the in, in in the space that we're in um and have the capacity to work on many levels on on you know with many different types of people towards a variety of different goals right yeah. and oftentimes mm -hmm. people find people like you and me a little bit more complicated to understand what we actually accomplish mm -hmm. so i want to ask you that you talked about indigenous, you talked about, you know, corporate leaders, you talked about entrepreneurial leaders. Is there something you do that's different with each of them so that you can actually lean into what psychologically works better for them to receive the knowledge and the experience that you're bringing to them to accomplish their specific goals? What a big question. It, it's a big question, but it's, it's a very important question. And the, the reason why I'm saying this is there's not one size fits all. There's not one in hmm. coaching. When I started uh, coaching, I started coaching while I was still in my corporate uh, 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 leadership roles. I did it uh, in parallel. I started to develop this. I, so I give leadership trainings within the company around the world I was working with because I was passionate about it, but also coaching leaders and also had my own business started already so for many, many years. But what I found, uh, what people told me, that, that came to me uh, uh, with, with, with the need for coaching was that they told me I, many of them had a coach and they had one methodology they were trained on mm -hmm. and they would try to fit that to any problem, to mm -hmm. every problem, basically. Mm -hmm. And they said it didn't work. It didn't, they didn't really listen to what I needed. So right. my the first part of engaging with somebody is really listening what they need. It could be that even in that in that we get to know process about what the person needs, who the person is, what they want to achieve in life, and what and and something in this it's not working. And I, the the client, the potential client that wants to be coached, could say it is not a good fit, or I could say it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. Maybe so. Let's say maybe there's not an alignment. I say quite a bit. I say no when there is. I get an offer to coach in a corporation where I don't believe in the mission of the company. Mm -hmm. I cannot, it would be a conflict for me. Mm -hmm. I would say like the certain industries, let's say your tobacco industry, mm -hmm. uh, unless they say we want to transform to, 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 to different uh, service for the world or whatever, mm -hmm. or let's say it's, it's kind of weapon industry, right? I don't believe that this is a good solution for the world. Right. And I'm not saying that people who believe in that, that they're wrong. I'm just saying this is, my value system. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I have been in the military and everything. I was drafted. I know all. It's not that I'm ignorant about it, but I'm saying so. There's certain uh, uh, requests that I say no to, so that to make sure it's a good fit. But then I really listen. I listen first. I ask questions to understand what is really needed. So there's people. You ask what, what can people, you know, what what kind of kind of engagement are they? There's either somebody is in a crisis. They hit the wall. Mm -hmm. Everybody hits at some point in time in life, the wall. So everybody needs it uh, at some point in time. I have needed that kind of thing where I call on people that I admire and, and they, I called them and they were listening. So we I all listen. need a mentor, right? We all need that. Mentor, coach, friend, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. you call it. Yeah. But somebody who can listen to you. 
Uh, so it's a crisis mode. That's a different type of coaching. Yeah. Then if somebody comes already, has gone through some kind of reflection and say, I have done some reflection and I want to move up to the next level, maybe next level of goals. Mm -hmm. I want to have a greater impact. That's an example. Maybe I have like, uh, I have been individual contributor and I want to become a manager or a leader of a team. Mm -hmm. Or I have been a leader of a team, but I now I'm thinking about having a greater impact. So I have coached people from, you know, not leading any people to a handful to thousands of people right. over multiple years. Right? right, right. But also there's a dimension that's very important for, for, to, to, to mention is it's not only about the skills to, let's say you met, you lead a few people to hundreds, to thousands, maybe more, even your impact. Some people are very, like have high aspirations, mm -hmm. but it's also, why do you do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is element of going in consciousness. So a lot of people that, and that's the feedback they gave me. And, and mm -hmm. I asked them, you know, from time to time saying, what happened? What change happened? Say, oh yeah, I'm able now, I, I feel more confident in creating transformation in other people's lives, different scale. But also I transformed, I have become a different person. I I, I feel differently. I People respond differently to me. And it typically goes across all relationships. It's not just a business transformation it is a transformation with their friends it's mm -hmm. a transformation in their if they're married in their marriage in their family relationship to their kids and that's very important that this type of development doesn't have any boundaries or walls because if you become a different person in terms of how you show up emotionally and with your behaviors and also like just how you show up right and who you attract to, to you that uh, it has an impact on any part of your life, no matter where you show up. Absolutely. I agree with you. So anyone that is intrigued and wants to know more about the things that you do and how potentially they could work with you, where shall we send them? Yeah, I, I have a website, uh, reinerlom.com. Very simple. And Brilliant. there people can find all information. They can, they can contact me <laughs> there. Uh, and and uh, uh, so it's uh, uh, that's available. Brilliant. So let's talk about this, you know, latest book of yours, folks. It's called Aspire: Seven Essential Emotions for Leading Positive Change, No Matter Where You Are. Tell me how this book factors into the mission of your company, Reiner. Let's start there. Yeah, I, I talked earlier about mobilizing leaders and 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 helping them, supporting them, uh, teaching them, coaching them to become more effective leaders in creating the change in the area they want to create, mm -hmm. and and that obviously always in in, in starts with themselves in, in terms of their own behaviors and and but also with the goal that they become more effective in influencing others, leading uh, changing behaviors of others. So. So leading uh, means basically creating a creating a vision of an aspirational vision of something you deeply care about. So you you imagine a future that is different from now that you aspire to alone or collectively as as an organization or a community. But also then, how do you change behaviors of the people to make that uh, that vision a reality? Mm -hmm. Now. It goes always back to starting with your own leadership behavior. Now, from an, uh, from there's many things that drive our behaviors, but one of the most powerful that I found in my work and in mm -hmm. my life, mm -hmm. drivers of behaviors are emotions. Now, we are, there's like some experts say there are more than 250 emotions, and there's a subset of those that, that are present that we feel at any given time if we are aware or not. Mostly we are not aware of them. Right. Very, very often it runs a little bit like a background program. It, it, it runs our behavior. And then afterwards we shake our heads and say, why did I do this? No? Mm -hmm. And it's this kind of like an intangible force, like an invisible force that drives our behavior. So why did I dive into that? I discovered that over the time I'm also trained as an ontological coach many, many years ago, which one of the dimensions is a more holistic approach to to coaching and one of the dimensions is emotions emotions mm -hmm. allow us to see something or not emotions can be a barrier for desired behavior or they can be a driver of desired behavior 
So I studied it. I practiced it for most of my life, I have to say, but more consciously for the last 10 to 15 years, really okay. deep. And I had the greatest success in, in creating a change in behavior, in, in, in enabling leaders to become more better leaders, more conscious leaders, more influential leaders when I coached in the emotional space. Mm -hmm. And it's so, as simple. Oh, go ahead. No, no, please, please carry on. It's as simple to say, am I aware of my emotions that drive my behavior? And is that... The, you know, is that useful, this emotion right now for what, what I need to do? Or is mm -hmm. it not useful? Mm -hmm. And if it's not useful, what is the emotion that I need to feel that helps to, in, that empowers the behavior that I need right now? I love that. Right? So, you know, what I love about what you're saying is oftentimes, you know, when people think about people in a position of power, empowerment, leadership, whatever you want to call it, all of the above, um, people feel that those people are in those positions because they kind of, you know, put their emotions in kind of the back burner, so to speak, and they deal more in, in the space of intellectuality, which what you're saying here, it, that's, it, it's the reverse that's the case more than anything else. It's that these people have heightened emotional intelligence, which allows them to make the decisions that are right for any given moment. Now, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I'm hearing you say here. That's a big part of it, no? It's kind mm -hmm. of you comparing now, let's say if you compare our uh, our brain, let's say with the computer, and let's say with two computers, the, 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 the rational part of our brain was the neocortex, you know, the frontal part, and, and then the emotional part that is much older, right? That yeah. came through evolution that uh, helps us to, make sense of the environment and then uh, learn a behavior that is useful in this, let's say, for example, fear in the older, olden days mm -hmm. to say fear of, of people use that example is almost overused like of, of a tiger. And then the fear drives the behavior of either running or fighting something yeah. like that or freezing. Yeah. Uh, but I, it, it still, it still applies. Right. But then making that, making that, uh, uh, uh visible for for yourself and say is that fear right now useful Do, is it even right that i have fear because maybe fear is coming up in a, in a, in a business meeting and there's no justification for it it's, it's made up in our mind that because the, the the boss raised his eye or her eyebrow when i said something now i'm in danger mm. right and i go into this fight freeze or flight mode and yeah. it happens all the time every day millions of times around mm -hmm. the world so let's let's tap a little bit into your book. Seven essential emotions for leading positive change, no matter where you are, really kind of I sat with that. And I want to ask you this: top line, high level, what are these seven essential emotions? Can you um like maybe encapsulate them a little yeah. bit for us? So we keep it top line and we don't lose people. Yeah, that, so I would like to to put it in in, in first in blocks of three, okay. and it's built like a like a pyramid uh, from the bottom up because they build on each other, even they okay. interrelate with it, which is other. So the first three that build the foundation of the pyramid: are empathy, compassion, and interest. Empathy drives caring. Mm -hmm. Compassion is includes and builds on empathy and adds the commitment to acting on that caring to commits to serving the needs of that person. Okay. Now, interest adds then the component of wanting and trying and feeling the need to understand the situation. Mm -hmm. Understanding the needs, I, me, my interest in you understanding what does Raj need right now for me? What I'm trying, I try to listen with interest to understand where are you going with this? What? How can I best serve the need that you have or your audience, your listeners, right? Mm -hmm. But in for a leader in a company, it's the understanding my stakeholders and understanding the systems and solutions that meet the needs of those stakeholders. Mm -hmm. That's that simple, but it sounds very abstract, but I can give examples later. But these are the first three that help you to empathize, care, and, and understand better. What are you dealing with, right? Who are you dealing with? Mm -hmm. But on top of those three is then so now with that knowledge, let's say I'm dissatisfied with the status quo of what I'm learning. The needs are not met of my stakeholders. What is the vision that I uh, uh, need to have or want to have in order to 
create a perfect world. Like I'm uh, talking a little bit idealistic here just to make mm-hmm. the point. Mm-hmm. That requires optimism. So optimism, it requires also inspiration, which mobilizes people to help pursue that vision, to make mm-hmm. it a reality. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, it requires coordinating effective actions towards that vision, setting goals and coordinating effective actions to move towards that vision. So to meet the needs of the people, the stakeholders, and that requires inspiration. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a sustained mobilization of people in any circumstance, company, community, in the whole country, in the whole world on an issue, you need to inspire them. You need to speak to their highest aspirations. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the three uh, on top of the first three Optimism, yeah, inspiration, and trust, and they are some of them are super complex, and we can go into more detail there. But they but can we're be not going to do that, Ryan. You know why? People need to go buy the book. That's Wonderful. it. Wonderful. They need to go That's buy why the I book. Wrote it. But, but absolutely, the seventh is is actually not a single emotion. It's 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 a palette of emotions. It's positivity. And the reason why I put that at the last one on top of the pyramid is that even with the best planning, with the best vision, with the best coordinating of of action, of collaboration and and inspiration and making the, you know, having followership and make like building a wonderful company that is executing towards a goal or a vision, things go wrong. Pandemics happen, wars Mm -hmm. happen. You know, uh, uh, financial crises are happening. Uh, we, you know, I, I have gone through many of those. But uh, so then you need to be resilient. The leader needs to be resilient. The leader, her or himself, needs to be resilient. But mo- even more important, needs to help everybody else to be resilient too. Mm-hmm. And that that emotional state is a positivity, and that's uh, proven by research and by science. That positivity in in a time of setback helps you to make better to to react better to the adversity you are facing. And mm-hmm. I can, can give more examples about that. But now positivity is a, is a palette of emotions, as I mentioned. And just to give you a you know few of the what we're talking about now: gratefulness, hopefulness, uh, uh, joy, amusement, awe, interest, optimism. These are all positive emotions, and they all help. To be resilient if we cultivate them anytime, but mm-hmm. specifically in, in, in a moment of adversity. You know, it's funny because as you were mentioning, you know, different um, you know, aspects of what positivity it positivity is, I started to smile. And it's interesting how just mentioning the words takes you to kind of a higher state of consciousness, takes, you know, shifts your energy up. And, you know, and I can't even imagine what it must be like to actually work through the book and to really deep dive it. Um, Where are we sending people to go grab this book? Is it available on your website or is it available, you know, across all different um, book retailers? Yeah, good question. So it's uh, it's available on Amazon and it's all uh, wherever country you live, where Amazon has a present, has a domain, Canada and the United States and other countries in Europe, around the world, wherever yeah. Amazon has a present, you can order the book. Uh, some countries have only, um, they don't have a local uh, printing capability, do they have the e- e-book available? Perfect. But in the main countries, it's all available as a printed, uh, printed version. Perfect. So let me ask you this. Everyone that is um, tapping into this particular episode, who from them do you feel is the reader of this book, if not everyone? Mm-hmm. Um, so the, I would say, uh, uh, let me go a little bit from the high up down, yeah. but on, at the highest level, really, uh, people uh, who are leaders, they might not be formal leaders okay. and, 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 and change makers, people that really have a strong desire to create change inside or outside of organizations. Now you might call them in, in an organization, entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. which is the, the counterpart of like same thing as an entrepreneur just within within the company mm-hmm. or outside you know it's outside of a large company it's an entrepreneur or it could be an activist uh in in, in a community or as a national level or even at a global level mm-hmm. that wants to create a better society no matter what issue they care about uh it could might be an asp- uh, like an uh, aspiring politician somebody that wants mm-hmm. to get elected as the leader and say, how can I influence people positively in a better way? 
uh, what are the emotional competencies that I have to um, to learn? What are the behaviors I need to show? Mm -hmm. And how can I make sure I'm in an emotional state that these behaviors really show up and are enabled? So it's really, it could be formal or informal leaders at any level of uh, in, in the hierarchy, uh, all the way from a first line manager or, or even not being a manager, just being a change maker, all the way up to the C-level people. So you heard it right here, folks. If you in any way see yourself in a position of responsibility, and I'm going to go as far as to even say on a personal level, I feel that this book is going to be very, very helpful for you. Go grab a copy because and, and, you know, drop a line to um, Reiner. Um, he's on LinkedIn. Let him know what you thought of the, of the book. I'm sure that he would love to know how it's impacted you or even, you know, your family and the ecosystem that you live in, the community that you live in. Because these are the things that are most um, powerful, right, Reiner, is the opportunity to hear back from people um, if what, you know, you've learned, what you've experienced in your, in, in your life and with people that you've worked with, how far, um, you know, reaching through the accessibility of a book format, can the change actually be amongst people that you will yeah. never ever even hear from? So this is a great opportunity, folks, when you pick up the book, go hit up Reiner at LinkedIn and let him know what you thought of it. Reiner, I wanna ask you this as we get ready to close off. The theme of today's episode, let's loop back around to it. I stated it off the top of the show is how to lead self others and organizations through holistic leadership so everyone wins mm -hmm. what do people need to know about that statement through everything uh, that we just talked about well first of all that anybody can do that anybody can learn to lead themselves and it starts with themselves it always has to start with themselves i have uh, taught leadership for 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 decades now mm -hmm. and uh, if you cannot lead yourself it's very hard to lead others. Mm -hmm. I would say almost it's impossible, mm -hmm. right? So it starts with yourself, but you have always to have some people that really support you. You cannot, like any leader, any, very often we have these heroes that created great companies or movement and so on, and they are put on a pedestal, but they could not have been successful without the support of all these people. Yes. Uh, if from Gandhi to MLK to Mandela, and you know, Yes. Uh, or, or Steve Jobs, et cetera, et cetera. But so this is, you have to have the team of supportive people you trust and, and, and that you coordinate effectively, you collaborate together and you have to have the support of those, but you also need to scale. Mm -hmm. I have examples in the book of the fall of the wall. I grew up in Germany, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of scale of change in behavior it required and how the emotional shift created that scale in behavior and how that created a peaceful revolution. Mm -hmm. Now we can have a peaceful revolution in the business world and we can have it in the in the society as well. Absolutely. You know, this brings me to um, a question I feel is probably one of the most important questions for me to ask you here. How can we accomplish this whole idea of everyone wins? <laughs> you know I that's think... the big thing here right that's the big thing that your book is 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 um you know telling us that's the the whole kind of big thing of the theme of this show how can everyone win is it truly yeah. a connectivity between you know self to your immediate kind of people that you're responsible to and then to kind of the scale com component, which we've been talking about it as an organization, but it could also be a community that you live in. It could, it could be even going as far as the community of the world that we live in. Talk to us a little bit. Yeah. Are there any are there yeah. any any revelations that you've had in that realm? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I many. That, I know that you that, have. That, that, no, but it was life changing for me. Mm -hmm. So the, the the circle of com empathy and compassion and interest, going that from like from self when you're very little, to your immediate family and friends and community and company you work for or whatever, and then spreading out the world, that can come as a, a cause in consciousness and awareness and in but it's an emotional shift. 
And I had this uh, revelation maybe 20 years ago, maybe more, when mm-hmm. I was on a business trip negotiating large multi-million dollar deal. And I'm 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 at night in the hotel room with jet lag. I turned on the TV and the documentary of from Africa came that were two ethnic groups. One ethnic group was uh, going through the other ethnic group and cutting the arms of every little child with a gun pointed to the head of the fathers who had to hold the arms. I was crying that moment. Mm-hmm. And what it was, it was, I was resonating emotionally with these fathers. I had a son at that time. Now I have two children, but uh, a grandchild as well. But I, I was like feeling what they were feeling or at least resonating with it. And suddenly my circle of empathy expanded tremendously. Mm-hmm. Right. So other people have explained different. Some people like astronauts go to space and see suddenly the beautiful planet. And this is our common home. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an example of uh, this is a role play. If you put two opposing people that don't like each other, maybe different ideology, and so they would not normally not talk to each other, never collaborate. You put them on an island, and they could only survive if they would talk to each other and collaborate together. How interesting! Would they die, the rather die, or would they decide to collaborate each other, to talk to each other and bridge the differences? Mm-hmm. And maybe in that process, develop empathy for each other and recognize the, the common humanity. Has anyone done that? Do you know if anyone's done that exercise? Um, I, <laughs> I have not seen it that way. I mean, uh, that would be uh, interesting, it, it is- wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> I think the the uh, these reality shows are, are manipulating um, those experiments. Yes. Uh, because to create a conflict, rather than mm. saying let's let's just see what what's they're doing happened. it the other way around, aren't they? But what a great reality show that would be, you know, to actually well, right rather than rather than have people that have no um, issues with each other create conflict right which is what reality shows do it's why we watch them right i don't but it's why yeah, people watch them what if we do it the other way around a reality show where people actually start at the point of conflict and then work towards you know union ah oh, that would be interesting yeah. i would watch and, that and one. i think this is a wonderful experiment there's Absolutely. something similar that happened that happened in uh, UK, a UK reality show. Okay. Uh, they did that. And uh, I, I don't know oh, how the starting did. point was, if they were adversities or not. But they uh, they closed down the show because they could not create a conflict between the people. The people were collaborating. <laughs> <laughs> they said, this is too boring. People don't want to watch that. They want to see people fight. And so very often they infuse co- a conflict in these reality shows, which people personally would never want it themselves because... Mm. The, the nature of people is to work together and feel good. You, mm-hmm. I mean, we don't feel good when we fight with each other un- unless we have some mental problems, right? But if we are healthy mentally and everything, as a human being, we want to get along with each other. We feel better uh, when we do. Absolutely. Rainer, I want to close off by asking you this. Is there anything at all that you feel that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to leave everyone with when it comes to those people who don't still quite understand the impact and the power of holistic leadership towards positive change? This is a, it's a very good question. I, I, I want to like maybe reinforce something. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you, any of your listeners uh, is dissatisfied with something around you in the world, in your community, in your family, no matter where it is, in society, you can make a difference. You can create positive change by changing your behavior. The, 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 the difference you make is the only question of scale. You might make a difference to one person. You can at least, every person I know can make at least a difference to one person mm-hmm. by changing their behavior. That's the first. The second I want to re-emphasize is in order to make, to create that change, you need to change behavior of others, starting with yourself. And the third thing I want to re-emphasize is really you can achieve that and you will achieve that and empower yourself doing that if you become aware of your emotions and you learn how to shift to the emotions that most support the behavior you need in this moment to create that positive change. I want to like re-emphasize that mm-hmm. it sounds 
simple and complex at the same time, but it, it's something you can continuously learn. You can just by learning a little bit makes a difference in your mm. life. I let people just pick one emotion initially that they can learn in. They have not learned so much yet, like trust. Uh, somebody doesn't trust mm -hmm. or some like a leader is not optimistic, is pessimistic and therefore cannot see a future that looks better, like create a, an aspirational vision, then mm. needs to work on optimism, but that can be learned. So I want to leave people with that, that this can be learned. Emotions can be learned and that yeah. affects your behavior greatly. And that leads to more holistic leadership because oh you become more empathetic, you become more compassionate, you become more interested in people and in the solutions. You become a better visionary, you inspire people better, you're going to create a better collaboration and you become more resilient. Absolutely. All of the above, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reina, I have loved everything about our conversation. Thank you so much for bringing your wealth of wisdom and insights to the show for our community here to benefit from. I really love, you know, your ideology and how you look at things, you know, truly from many different layers and how they all come together towards accomplishing the goal of truly holistic leadership where everyone wins. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Raj. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Guys, cultivating a leadership-centric life is one that can benefit all aspects of your life because I've learned over my lifetime that the nucleus to great relationships is in how you conduct yourself, how you lean into others, and how together you create community around your endeavors. As Raina states, leading self leads to leading others, which leads to leading successful organizations. I really hope that you got some real value from today's show and will share it with everyone you know who you feel needs to get these learnings. I also hope that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the notification button at the Open Chess Confidence Academy so that you never miss an episode which drops every Wednesday, as you guys know. You can also download Download the Transform Your Confidence show on podcast platforms and give it a five-star rating, guys, if you feel that it's a valuable resource to assisting your journey to empower your confidence with actionable insights. You can also read the podcast. As you guys all know, we have it on our blog at the open chest confidenceacademy.com forward slash media forward slash podcast. And as always, guys, I'll see you next week for another invaluable episode packed with insights and learnings to help empower your work, your life, and your spirit. Take care of yourself, guys.